Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about the LCD4 display, the KT LCD4 display. So if you didn't already know, based on my videos and my posts, I recently had a little crash and in the crash I destroyed my display. And when the display doesn't work, the bike doesn't work. Uh, so I ordered a part, uh, waited for it to come from China like two, three weeks. And then when it got here, I needed to learn how to, you know, put the display on the bike and set it to the bike. You have to basically set the whole thing up, uh, which is something they do for you in the factory. Uh, Zeus does that for you, so if you need to replace it, you have to learn uh, what they do to set it up in order for your bike to work properly. This display was standard on the 2021 edition, or Gen 1, of the Zeus bike. And a lot of people like it because it's small. Um, but eventually it was phased out because it, it didn't really take a beating too well. Um, it's a little bit fragile. So they went with, uh, for a while they went with um, LCD5. And now, I, I don't know exactly which one it is now. It might be 8. But for all intents and purposes, the settings are the same across all of them. So if you're looking to uncork your bike, if you're looking for how to set up your display after getting a new one um, because you have to tune it to your controller, you have to set all the specific um, P and C settings specific for the Zeus bike, uh, this is the place to do it. I'll take you through each part of the setup and show you um, what to do, what to set each one as, and also uh, some tips on what I think is better uh, from my own setup and my own use. And uh, like I said, if you're looking to uncork your bike and make it go faster, this is where you'll learn how to do it. Uh, something else I'm gonna cover in this video is a problem that I've seen a lot of people have, and I've also had it myself when I had to replace the display. Uh, you hit the throttle, um, your battery meter looks fine, and then as soon as you hit the rear brake, uh, you notice the battery meter jumps up and down or it moves while you're riding, um, doesn't give you a consistent read on how much juice is left in your battery. It says one bar, it says four bars, it says no bars, it says three bars. This is a function of the C settings. And I'll go through that and show you how to fix it if you have this problem. Here's a little uh, peek at what the problem looks like. You can see I'm hitting the throttle. Um, you'll hear the motor spinning the wheel. And then when I hit the rear brake, you'll notice the battery meter jumping up and down, giving me all sorts of crazy readings. Uh, that'll be one of the last things that we fix in this video since it's all the way at the end of the C settings. Um, but if you want to just jump right to that, go to this uh, time on the video right there below and that'll show you how to fix it. But I think it's worth it for you to watch this whole thing so you can see if there's any other settings you might wanna change while you're in there. Plus it's just good to know how your bike operates and what the display is telling the controller to do to your bike. Okay, so you can see how new this is. I still didn't take that off. Okay, so when you turn your bike on, the first thing you've got to do is immediately hold down the up and down buttons at the same time. All right, then that'll give you this blinking number here. And from there, you're going to set your max speed. So you can go as low as you like, but it's in uh, kilometers per hour, so that's around 40. Uh, I think it's around 40. Uh, so select what you want, the max is 72. Then hit this power button again once. That'll take you to the next one where you select your wheel size. Uh, you can select what you want, but um, Zeus recommends using 26 because what you're actually doing is um, measuring the width of the entire rubber um, from outer edge to outer edge. So it's usually around 25 plus inches. So 26 is the closest option we have. Then last is here where you'll change your uh, reading from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. So I like miles per hour, so that's what I'm using. Hit this button again, and then you'll get the opportunity to go into your P settings. Right now, the display's still lit up and it's a solid, display, no blinking, hold the up and down buttons together again, and now you're in your P settings. You'll have a minute to work on each setting 
before it goes back to the original screen. P1 is your motor gear reduction ratio multiplied by the number of magnets on your motor. Now, I forget what the exact numbers are, but for each of those parameters, but for the 750, you're gonna put in 100. Uh, I think it's a five to one ratio and, tw and like maybe 20 magnets, something like that. And then for the UU 1100, you put in 46. I don't know why, but that's the number. Next, hit the power button and it brings you to P2. P2 is a function of P1. And what it does is it detects the revolutions on your wheel in order to determine your speed. I was told to leave it at zero. P3, press the button again. P3 is a pedal assist control. P3, one allows you to throttle on demand and zero means that you're limited by a certain speed. So we don't want to limit our speed. So we're going to use one. Next one, P4. P4 zero allows you to throttle on demand and one means you have to actually pedal in order to use your throttle. So we don't want that. So we're going to leave it at zero. P5 is telling your controller basically how much voltage your battery has in order to determine what to display up here in the battery meter. I read somewhere that 25 is the right number to use for the 52 volt power source on the 1100. I think 15 is what they have it as for the 750. Um, I don't know if 25 is too high. It might give you like a little bit of a false reading up there. It might make you think your uh, battery is less full than it is. Like right now I know that my battery is fully charged but it's showing as one bar down. So maybe I'll set it at 20 this time instead of 25 and see how that works. The other option is you can set this to zero and that will allow the display to kind of automatically figure out what measure of battery power you have left. But like I said, I'm gonna try it on 20 this time and see if that gives me a more accurate reading. Now, after you finish P5, that's the end of the P settings. So when you hit the button again, it's gonna be solid, no more blinking. Hold the two up and down buttons together again and you'll be into your C settings. So now here we are at C1. But C1 is an arbitrary sensitivity rating of how sensitive your cranks are in order to kick on your pedal assist. So the more sensitive it is, the faster it will go on if your pedal assist sensor detects movement. Uh, number four is sort of like the in-between middle ground. So I like to keep it on that because I don't want to accidentally push my bike if I hit the pedal inadvertently. I want to be able to know that I'm pedaling a little bit before I know that the pedal assist is going to kick on. So I leave it at four. I should also note that in C1, you can actually reverse the direction of the pedal assist. Um, like if your pedal assist thing is set up on the other side of the bike and um, you know, you're finding out that you're pedaling backwards and it's kicking on the pedal assist, that means it's reversed. You can also reverse it within C1. C2 is a motor phase classification. I have no idea what that is, but it's supposed to be left at zero. C3, this eight, allows you to turn the bike on and have it be at the last pedal assist level that you just used. You can set it as one, two, three, four, five, or you can set it so that the display remembers where you last left off, which is what I like. That's why I keep it at eight. C4. C4 allows you to go at maximum speed at all different pedal assist levels. Um, you can set this so that your speed is limited at each pedal assist level. So maybe in one, you'll only hit 18 miles an hour and two, maybe you'll hit 22 and so on. The other thing that you can do here is you can set the speed to be maximum. So um, within two, within this number two, you're setting the speed for all of them. And then you can select your kilometers per hour to be maxed out at each one. It gives you the same effect as having it set up to C for zero. It's just another way to achieve the same max speed at all different pedal assist levels. So just to reiterate for C4, you can either leave it at zero or you can pick two plus 72 in order to max out your speed at all different pedal assist levels. C5 
this is a adjustment of the maximum amount of output of power that your controller is sending. So right now this is set out at the maximum amount of power from the controller. You'll have max speed and you'll have max torque. So leave that at 10 if you want that uncorked max. C6. This is your display brightness. Five is the brightest, one is the dimmest. You can kind of see that. Um, three is obviously in the middle. I like it bright and I don't care that it sucks a little juice from the battery, so I like to be able to see it in the dark. So I leave it at five. C7. C7 allows you to turn on your cruise control. Setting it to one means you're turning the ability to use cruise control on. Setting it to zero means your cruise control is off. I don't use it, I don't ever use it here in the city. I'm, fluctuating my speed too often to use it. So I don't need it, I leave it off. But you know, if you have big open roads and you're out you know, in the suburbs and you like to cruise and you don't feel like paddling, you don't feel like throttling, you can put your cruise control on. C8. C8 is your motor temperature display. It requires a sensor to be installed on your motor, which we do not have on the Zeus. So this is really not for us. One will turn it on, zero turns it off. C9. C9 is used to turn on your password in order to unlock your bike on the display. Don't fuck around with this and don't, don't accidentally turn it on and screw up your ability to get into your bike. Keep it at zero, that means it's off. C10. This is a yes, no function. You can see right now it's flashing N, that's no. From here you can do a factory reset if you switch it to yes. So we don't want to do that. C11, this is a rarely used um, setting where you can transfer data from one display to another display. Uh, for example, if you're getting a new display, you could transfer some of the data over that is stored within the display. It requires a separate um, apparatus to be attached, so we don't need to deal with that. C12, C12 is for small voltage value adjustments in order to help your battery meter detect when it is down to zero. I leave it at four, that's kind of the default. Um, I was not able to find any information about when to change it and why. So I'm gonna just leave it at the default. C13, now this is where you'll be able to fix your battery meter display problem. Zero is off, one is on for this. And what it is, it is a function of regenerative braking power for um, direct drive hubs. Now the 1100 does have a direct drive hub, but what happens when you have regenerative braking on is that it sends juice back from the hub to the battery. And so when your display is trying to read the battery meter and how much juice is left, it's getting a jolt of energy from the hub and it's making the readout impossible. That's why it jumps around. So when you put this at zero, if you have that jumpy battery problem, it will fix the problem. It fixed it for me and it fixed it for others that I told about. So hopefully it fixes it for you as well. So leave that to zero. I also noticed no uh, difference in stopping power when I took the regenerative braking off. Regenerative braking is usually for heavier bikes. It allows more stopping power to be generated to stop your bike when you're going fast and you have a heavy bike. But for our purposes, the Zeus is not very heavy, so it stops just fine without it. C14. This is the last setting, and it's about the strength of your pedal assist. You can set it at two, which is right in the middle, or you can do the weakest or the strongest. It doesn't change your max speed. It'll just change the amount of jolt that you feel when the pedal assist kicks in. Some people like less, some people like more, and I can see the argument for each, but I just keep it right in the middle, it doesn't really matter to me, I mostly throttle. So that's it, that's all the P settings and the C settings. You hit this again and you're back to a frozen screen. You hold this again, the power button, and it'll take you back and all your settings should be saved with each click as you're going through the settings. So that's really all there is to it. It might seem a little bit confusing and overwhelming at first and there there's going to be things you don't necessarily understand unless you're some sort of uh, electronic wizard, but uh, that's pretty much it. Everything seemed to have worked fine for me, and I hope the same is true for you. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your grandma.